Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Shukriya darshok. Shuru hote jiggesha jiggesha the ami achi apna deshte paasha khondo ka. Ane kono ekshobe cha. Darshok bara bara er moto amade je oti thi thaken. Amra kakhono Bangladesh theke ago to oti thi. Abar kakhono e deshidi kono ekjon oti thi ni apna desh samukha hajiroi. Aske amasthe jini achen. Tini e deshidi ekjon British Bangladeshi community attanto talented. Ami bolbo hidden talent. এই ধরনের হিডেন ট্যালেন্টের সংখ্যা আমাদের দেশে অনেক আমরা তাদেরকে নিয়ে আসব আপনাদের সম্মুখে আপনাদের সম্মুখে তাদের পরিচিত করব তাদের দেখে যাতে আমাদের ভবিষ্যৎ প্রজন্ম এই দেশে আমাদের কমিউনিটিকে অনেক দূরে গিয়ে নিয়ে যেতে পারে তা আমরা আজকে যার সাথে কথা বলবো তিনি হচ্ছেন আমিনুর রহমান খসরু তিনি পেশা একজন মেকানিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ার এবং ম্যাথমেটিশিয়ান তিনি বিশ বছরের মতো এয়ার স্পেস সার্ভিসে আছেন যার কন্ট্রিবিউশনে অনেক ফেমাস এয়ারশিপের জন্ম হয়েছে এবং লেটেস্ট এয়ারশিপ আজকে যারা আমরা মনে করেন ডিফেন্স লাইনে এফ থার্টি ফাইভ আছে যেটা নতুনভাবে রয়্যাল এয়ার ফোর্সে রিসেন্টলি ইনক্লুড হয়েছে ওয়ান অফ দ্য টপ টেকনোলজির ফাইটার জেট তিনি এই ক্রু টিমের একজন সদস্য যার নেতৃত্বে যার সহযোগিতায় যার কোলাবরেশনে এই এয়ার স্পেসের জন্ম এয়ারশিপের জন্ম সরি তো আসুন আমরা তার সাথে পরিচিত হই তার থেকে এই বিষয়ে কিছু শুনি খসরু আপনাকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ আমার প্রোগ্রামে আসার জন্য আই এম ভেরি গ্রেটফুল দ্যাট ইউ আর হিয়ার হাউ আর ইউ ফাইন থ্যাংক ইউ অ্যান্ড ফার্স্ট অফ অল থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ ফর হ্যাভিং মি অন দ্য শো শো আই ডোন্ট ইউজলি গেট অ্যান অপরচুনিটি টু কাম অন টিভি ওর টু ওর টু প্রেজেন্ট কমিউনিটি চ্যানেল ইয়েস অ্যান্ড উই ওয়ান্ট কমিউনিটি পিপল কমিউনিটি ট্যালেন্ট লাইক ইউ টু বি হিয়ার Now, Khosrow, I just wanted to, first of all, I just wanted to know your profession. Uh, what is your profession is? Um, I'm, I'm a mechanical, but first I'm a mechanical engineer in the aerospace industry. I'm, my area of, okay, mechanical engineering is, is a huge subject, but my area of a specialism is in a subject called what we call stress uh, dynamics, stress and dynamics, which basically comes under structural integrity, which basically um, <coughs> my responsibility is to basically ensure that um, the structural integrity requirements of the aircraft um, are met such that the aircraft is not is going to survive for the life of the aircraft in in the in, in the manner in which it is going to be used is it, is during it service in general aircraft or only defense or uh, any aircraft um, my main area of work has been on military um, fighter jets oh. and helicopters i have also worked on civil aircraft namely the boeing 777 um, i worked on the flight control system um for the Boeing 777 and the latest um passenger jet produced by Bombardier the C5 series which is the latest state of the art aircraft so I I worked on the flight control system for 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 Bombardier So so far I know you are 20 years with this business Yes Okay we cannot say we cannot talk about 20 years <laughs> Okay <laughs> latest one I know the world knows about the mm. latest jet fighter mm. F-35, F-35, yeah? F-35, yes. F-35, and which has just recently been launched in British uh, Royal Air Force, yeah? That, that's right. So um, the Royal Air Force has just taken, um, only, uh, just has taken delivery of the first sort of batch of, of the F-35 um, fighter jet. The F-35 fighter jet is... Can I, can I just uh, hold you here? Yes. I know this is a military secret, many mm. things. as far as possible we would like to know about f35 and then i will i will find out what contribution you go in yeah uh, the f35 is the latest most advanced fighter jet um, ever to be produced it's a trillion dollar project headed headed up by lockheed martin which which is one of the uh, which is the largest uh, defense company um, in, in the world in the world yeah so so the whole project is being managed by um, Lockheed Martin and it's and we and at any one time there's over 100,000 people uh, working on this on 100,000 100,000 people at any one time that's working on this project and I'm 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 I'm, I'm one of those well you um, are not one of them anyway yeah. go on yeah so it is a stealth it is a stealth 
fighter which has capability for vertical and short uh, run takeoff. Vertical takeoff meaning it can take off without a runway or we can straight. Run straight. Yeah. So it, it's, it's ideally suited for the aircraft carriers. The most advanced thing about the aircraft was I don't know, you know, because um, because there are many you know, technical things about the aircraft which I wouldn't be able to talk about. Right. But w my area of contribution to the aircraft is the design of the, what we call the active inceptor system, uh, which is a bit of a flight control system. What the pilot is the interface between the pilot and the and the aircraft. What in your case, for example, if you take the car, for example, it's the steering wheel right. is the interface between the car and, and the steering and, 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 and the and driver. The pilot, driver so, yeah. so the active inceptor is basically that interface between the pilot and the aircraft. What's unique about the active inceptor system is that, is that it's a fly-by wire system where there's no, in, in a traditional control system, you would have me mechanical linkages okay, that we, link. We, we're not yeah. going to go for this yeah. technical side, so it's one of the most sophisticated aircraft yes, for yes, the defense service yes, nowadays. Yeah. So where did you build it in this country? Uh, it, we developed the flight control system in Rochester where, I, where, I'm, where I'm based. In, so Kent, yeah. in, 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 in Kent. I mean, the, the, the other feature of that technology is, in theory, the technology is capable of flying multiple aircraft, but with one pilot. So you multiple can, aircraft yes, and one pilot? Yes, so yeah, they can be all linked together. But in the, even in defence, you're talking about? In practice, it probably won't happen, but the technology has the capability for there, for example, to be, you can have umpteen number of aircraft, just one pilot, and whatever this pilot does, the, the other aircraft, aircraft will, will, will follow. Is it in practice now or is it still in theory? Theoretically it's possible, but practically I don't think it will, it will probably... Okay, yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, fine, I understand this. Now tell me, uh, I know that uh, you are one of the fellow in Institute of Mechanical uh, uh, Engineering yeah. Institutes, mm -hmm. yeah? And you, so far I know you are one of the youngest ones. How old are you were in that time? Yes. Um, what is it? What is the right. fellowship? Is? The, the fellowship is, is basically the highest level of professional qualification you can have in an engineering institution in this, in this country. Right. Uh, typically what you would normally do, you'd become a chartered engineer, which normally takes around five years um, after practicing as a professional engineer. Right. And then to meet the fellow category, um, to, meet, to become a fellow, it means you have to operate at the highest, not only at the technical level, but also at, at a high, very, very high level of responsibility mm. um, to be, to be uh, given a fellowship. And I was quite fortunate because uh, my f I, I, became, I became a charter engineer in 2002 and I became a fellow in 2008. And the fellowship has to be sponsored by another, another two fellows. And I was personally sponsored by the engineering director of BP right. and one and, and um, the Royal um, School of Mechanical Engineers. Based so, how in old are you in that time when you were a fellowship? I was, I was just under forty. Just under forty, yeah. and it's a bit unusual for them, yeah. It's unusual for fellowship to be given some, to someone who, because a fellowship are usually people at directorship level. Oh right, so that is that is a level or, or, or very very senior managerial position. Right, uh, that is the sort of level at which fellowship is usually awarded. But I was awarded because of my because of my technical expertise and the responsibility that I had on the F thirty five project. Okay, fine. Now I just wanted to go a little bit back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you from Kent? I am from Kent. Yes. Are you born in Kent? No, I was actually born in Bangla Bangladesh. Uh, that's um, <laughs> um, village. How old were you were when you came? Uh, two years old. Oh, you were. Yeah, two. Nineteen seventy. And you've been since you were in Kent. Yes. Yes. Uh, any specialised school you've been? No, I actually, um, this is quite, may, may, may be quite surprising to a lot of people, um, because what you've got to remember, I, I was the second generation of, uh, one of the second generation of British Bangladeshis. Yes. Yeah. I actually left school with no O-levels or A-levels, a because um, at, at the time when I was in school, education was not something that was on parents' um, agenda. It was, you know, it was something that you had to go to school, and after school you just, you know, most most of my friends worked in the restaurant. I mean, I I worked in a restaurant. I mean, in fact, it was, <laughs> you went it, to the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I, I worked in because um, to to fund my fir, you know the the college years, um, I had to work, and so I was working. So your father decided to give you the uh, uh, a restaurant to become a restaurant owner. 
No, we never. My family never went into the restaurant business because business, yeah. my father used to work in the naval dockyard, oh, and, and, and he Navy. retired from from the naval do, uh, dockyard. So, as a family, we never. Um, um, well, that, that, that's incorrect, really, because my father, before I was born in 1960s, this was, he had one of the very first, probably was probably one of the very first Bangladeshi restaurants in Northampton in the 1960s. Your that, father heard it. My father, but that was before I was born. But did, what did it happen to you that he wanted to be a mechanical engineer and he wanted to build your career on that side? Um, when I left school, um, I decided to do engineering without any career guidance, but because I always had a passion for um, um, wanting to know how things how things worked and why things are the way they are. For example, cars, etc. And when I was young, I remember one of my favourite. TV programs was Star Trek, and I was always fascinated by space travel and spaceships, and, I, and to some extent I, 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 I still am. And it's that sort of interest and that sort of passion that, that encouraged me to go into engineering. And I must say, um, in school, I, I would be classed, even looking back now, as a late developer, so, <laughs> I didn't, right. so I didn't really shine in school. It's only at the latter end of my college years that I actually that's, started that's to... That's very important that yeah. in a school he wasn't that counted figure at no, all. No, no, no. Not no, at all. No. I mean, if, if I achieved what I achieved in school at that time today, yeah. I would be, um, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be even considered for anything. So, so that's, you know, so that one of the messages I want to anyway, get across. Anyway, we will yeah. talk about yeah. more about our community yeah. involvement and how the community can be benefited from your yeah. story. After the break, we'll take a short break and we'll speak after that. Dashok, Daxin Jigasha, Kathabulchi Amra Janap Amin Rahman Kosrushate, Amra Bigapon Birutin Pore Abarov, and the Shate Kathabe, Amad Shati. Biruti theke fir eshe abar oshobe chha dekhen jige sha kotha bolchi amra amader oti thi jonab khosru shat. Jonab khosru, I was saying uh, you were you were saying that that he wasn't an accountable figure in his school, yeah? Yes. And your time he wasn't O level, A level, or your time target was not that clear, yeah, for you. Family support wasn't that good because our family in that time wanted to earn some money. That was obvious for us. Mm -hmm business line or the restaurant line and we are proud to be part of that family that family has given us a platform to be here now i wanted to know from you that do you think for our our kids our british Bangladeshi community about the education system we go here do you have anything to say about it yes i think the the, the there's been a lot of discussions about the education system and i know michael go when he was education minister, tried to change, introduce a lot of change. He has made yeah. so many yeah. changes. Yeah. Yes, I, I think the, from my own personal ex experience, I think the problem with the education system that it's become very, very competitive at a very early age, and it's put and it's put and it puts a lot of stress on young children, uh, and I think they're too young to be put under under that level of stress. And not only are the children under stress, but also the parents. Are under stress, and what I I see is that children are not given time to to develop because not everyone has the same um, rate at which they can they can learn. Some are slow, some develop quite fast, and I think the current system doesn't allow for that. And what the current system tries to do is tries to bring everyone to the same level. We, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand this yeah. thing. It's a big, big arena. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to uh, cannot discuss these things today yes. because of our time yeah, limit. Yeah. But what I want to say that our children, yeah, our kids, yeah, because I know many family members wanted to know what their son to be. Mm -hmm. They have no idea because mm -hmm. our education level is not that high. Yeah. What message would you have for them? How they can pick their kids for their future target? I think um, th the thing not to do is not to not to push your is not to push your 
child, child to something that you want them to be, rather than let them let, give them enough experiences of of um, of of life or, or or education, so that they are able to make find that area that they feel comfortable with, that they enjoy, they 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 like. And now, then you tell me when you decided to be an engineer, and we when you decided. Uh, to be in a part of the space world, mm -hmm. who helped you? Well, no one because really. No well, one helped you. No one really helped me, but. Um, but, but you, but I, you I, must have a support from somewhere. No, because I had. I was. I was fortunate enough to. Because uh, I had a father who worked for the uh, uh, naval dockyard. Right. So he was very hands-on person. So I could see a lot of the things that my father did, and that sort of fascin uh, fascinate, uh, fascinated me. But naturally, I was always. Um, curious about things and I think what we need to do to our children is try and build that curiosity in them by exposing them to to activities that will enable to to you know develop that interest or, or that cu uh, curiosity um, uh, yeah, sorry I was going back to my question mm -hmm. again on the back because yeah. you said you have worked or you have done something for the passenger aircraft as well yeah yes what was it um, Bombardier C uh, C uh, C series aircraft C yeah. five C five. Is well, what oh, is it launched already? That's uh, that's going. That is is it hasn't. It's just coming into production. Um, so it's just going What's through. What's the different? Um, the difference. What is, is the latest technology it's got that uh, for the passenger? It has. It has because look. So what you have to remember: a lot of the um, aircrafts out there. Mm -hmm. are, are all based on, on airframes that have been designed back in the 60s, back in the 70s. The C5 is, a, is, is one of the latest... Um, is it Boeing we called or...? Uh, Bombardier, uh, Bombardier. Bombardier. It's, it's made by a ca Canadian company called uh, Bombardier. So what's the difference? I just um, want to know what's the latest technology you've got. It's, it's really the, it's the control system and the avionics, that's the, right. that's the difference. It's got the state-of-the-art avionics system, flight control systems, uh, a lot of the it's the most secure one, or uh... um, it has a lot more capability. And because one of the things that drives the air, aircraft industry is is the emissions requirement, the pollution requirements. Right, right. Yeah. Right, so, right. so, pollution. so yes. Yeah, go on, tell so, 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 you know, some of the pollution requirements now are, are very, very stringent. So, the idea is to make the aircraft as light as possible. So, a lot of the a lot of that aircraft has um, composite structures. Um, you know, which have been which have been replaced, which, where traditionally you would have used aluminium or lightweight metallic materials. So where possible, they, there's a lot of composite material that have been used in the aircraft. What we've done at Rochester is design the flight control computers for that aircraft. It's a system that basically controls the entire. Um, so aircraft. your your field is mainly the uh, designing the. Flight control system, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, they see bombard Bombardier C5 series. C5. Yeah. So you'll be more lighter flights, yeah, mm -hmm. and less uh, eco-friendly. Eco-friendly, uh, more fuel efficient. More fuel efficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. In one extent, you said that the Islam, the religion, has played a very significant role in your life, mm -hmm. and especially in your education and in your career as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. What do you mean by that? Um, I, um, I never really understood um, um, religion, is, is Islam, until I really went to university and when I started meeting other Muslims um, from, um, from other, uh, other countries. And the verse that had the most profound impact on me uh, personally was the, was the very first verse that was revealed. When I read that for the first time in English, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ ربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم Read in the name of your Lord who created, who created man from something which clings. Read and your Lord is the most noble. He who taught by the pen taught man that which he knew not. And That's, in, we all believe that. Yes. But what's the difference? But the message in that is, is that Allah is commanding us to read. See, our religion, the, the entire emphasis of our religion is that it calls upon your intellect, your reason, to, to reason, to, you know, time and time and again in the Quran it says, you know, look at the heavens and the earth, how it's going, look at yourself, look at the animals, look at, you know. Yeah, um, I understand this, but know. 
What kind of impact you got in your education on that or your academic career on that? Because I believe, um, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah that if you're going to do anything, do it well. Allah and Allah you do it well. So if you're going to do anything, excel in what you, what you do. And you also have to remember that each of us, Allah has given each of us um, different abilities. And we will be accountable for those abilities in terms of how we used those abilities. Um, it's not a case of... Um, I have all these degrees and now I'm going to go out and convert people to Islam. No, it's the case of that I'm a Muslim and you have to show that, you know, show your, um, your integrity, um, your honesty and that, and, and, and that they, that and they again, see. And again, you are you you playing with this space world, isn't it? Yes. So, <laughs> mm. This is something that we have to believe how we are doing it, yeah? Yes, yes. So when they see me, when they see, you know, the fact that I'm, I've been awarded a fellowship of two institutions, then, you know, I don't hide the fact, I'm not ashamed, and I don't hide the fact that I am a Muslim. So what they see is that they see not only Qasri, but they also see a Muslim. And that in itself will give a certain message to them that, you know, this is a Muslim and look what he has achieved and look what he is doing for the prosperity of this country or this organization. So in your life, uh, in your, uh, I mean, academic or career life, the math is played a big role in it. Yes. So you are a mathematician as well, in it. Yes, I, I did my PhD in mathematics. In math, it was all engineering, but it was purely uh, based around mathematical modeling. Right. So, because my area of specialty is in vibration analysis, which is a very mathematical-based um, discipline where you're using a lot of complex mathematical techniques to solve engineering, complex engineering. Um, problems. Right. Um, now, finally, tell me that, um, not finally, I mean, like, that you are doing some research here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you are making a research paper. What is it for? I'm, I'm writing a research paper with the University of Wales on environmental ethics. Now, this is a really interesting topic and a very relevant topic, and particularly um, for, for, for Bangladesh and Bangladeshis. Because we are now living in, in you know, we have a, a, a huge, immense environmental crisis, in not just in this country, but all throughout the world. And in particular, I would say, in a in, in, in lot of the developing countries, which includes Bangladesh. Because uh, if you look at some of the environmental issues in Bangladesh, like, um, like many of the major rivers in Bangladesh, and particularly in, 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 in Dhaka, have become so toxic that it's, it's been declared uh, uh, septic, like um, like all life was basically is, is dead. The river is basically dead, and this has been declared by the World, uh, World Health, uh, Health Organization. Organization yeah. And this is just, and this is purely because of the amount of toxic waste from the leather industries and 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 raw sewage and other industries that's being directly so dumped. What mm. what impact is going to have from your research? Well, what I'm looking at, because when you look, when when you read the Quran. Um, and uh, three percent of the Can Quran. Briefly, I haven't got yeah, much yeah. time. Three percent of the Quran is deals with your rituals, you know, the ritual works. But ninety-seven percent of the Quran deals with ethics, and that covers also how you, um, how, how how you your your moral and ethical behavior, not just towards each other, but towards the environment, Natural animals, well. etc. And this is something that is not being discussed or talked about in any of the masjids. So you're going to tell about it. In your paper, I want to I, I, I want to see that in every masjid there should be a curriculum that solely deals with ethics based on the Quran and Sunnah. Because thank you, yeah. thank you, Khosrow. We have got uh, much. Mm. Uh, I will say very good, highly mm. informative interview today. Mm. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for mm. giving us the time. Thank you, Darshak. Uh, Dakhlan talent. Hidden talent. Either no one hidden talent. Our community does it. Our our program is made up. We have our own talent. We have to do it. 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 We have to एक है ने माता उसी को ले डाला बे आप लोग भालो था तो उन सुस्त था कोई अल्लाह का दुश्मन अल्लाह